it that you have made for us to rejoice in it. And right now, Father, we're asking, Lord, that your presence will cover each and one of us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for what you have done for us this course of the week. And because of that, we say thank you because you are with us always. Thank you. And now, Father, we surrender this service unto you to give you all the glory with it, Lord Father. Praise you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Victoria? Do you have any announcements or anything? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming out in the downpour today. Fun, right? I have a very special event that I'm so excited to tell you guys about. It's exclusively for the ladies, the girls, the women of this church, right? We need some pampering every now and then, right? It's going to be this Friday at our monthly Connect event. One of my dear, dear friends, um, her name is Gigi. She has been here before. She has a ministry called Beauty Crowns, and she's going to come and just minister to us and talk about what it means to be the bride of Christ and to live that out. And then she has a very, very special presentation that she does for each and every woman and every girl that will be here. There's not any age limit. We were going to do separate events for the youth and for the women, but we've just decided that since Jesus' heart is for unity, we're going to bring unity to the women of this church. So, yes, right? Now, I do need to know within the next few days if you're going to be able to attend. So if you could please see me or see Lillian. We just need, um, we just need to know that you'll be here because she makes a personalized favor for each and every one of you. And there is a cost associated with this of $10. If that's a problem, talk to me, talk to Lillian. We'll make sure that you're able to be here because you do not want to miss this. It is going to bless your heart. And I just believe that there is going to be a supernatural outpouring of the love of our bridegroom Jesus on this night. So come on and find out just how much he loves you because it's going gonna, it's gonna to wreck you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. And there'll be youth group tonight, youth meeting tonight. So it'll be at 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, June 23rd, there's a sign-up sheet out front. We will be having a um, church work day. So in other words, we're all getting together and to help clean, do a major spring cleaning, even though, yes, yeah, spring is now. It came in a little late, but major spring cleaning. And we need your help. Okay, uh, we will have more information about it at what time we're starting, most likely around 9 o'clock in the morning. But we're going to have different sectors, sections. It will be interior and exterior. So please come on down and help us out. Like I said, there's a worksheet out there. Please sign up. Uh, Vacation Bible School, July 16th through the 20th. Um, see Mandy for information. Okay, and there's a sign-up sheet up back there as well for it. We need you folks to commit to either help, to pray, but mostly to help and pray, but help, okay? Um, July 7th, 9 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning, men's breakfast. Amen? Amen. After the service today, uh, you'll be dismissed, but if you want to stay for a baptism, you may. Uh, Rich Vreelin uh, has a friend that's coming, and he's going to be baptized, so you're welcome to stay for that, okay? Amen? All right, let me share with you something that's uh, very important today. Before I start, let me just say this. Uh, how many believe in seasons? How many have found out you weren't looking forward to the season that was ahead, but 
nonetheless it was ordered by God. How many could say amen to that? All right, because it's a faith thing, is it not? Well, my announcement today concerns the Ebies, Pastor Mark and Sandy. I learned this week that they were going to resign and have done so, okay? I really was taken by surprise because I didn't see it coming at all. I didn't have a clue that this was going to happen, but I know Sunday night we had a missionary couple here, and it was a tremendous service. I wish more of you would have been here, but been there for that. But anyway, prior to the service, uh, Pastor Mark said, I got something I need to talk to you about. I feel like resigning. I says, okay. And then they had fellowship afterwards, so it wasn't a good time for us to talk. But I said, please call the office, set up an appointment. And they did for Monday morning at 10. And we sat down and we talked and discussed things. And I thought, really, when they left, that they weren't going to do that. And uh, was I surprised Tuesday when I get to the office? And there's a letter there a letter of resignation. And so I had the secretary call them again to point up uh, or to set up an appointment for Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. And when they arrived, I already knew something because prior to that, once I, we got the letter on Tuesday, I left the office and I went down and I walked in the lower parking lot because, wow, I, I just wasn't ready for this. I. I didn't, like I said, I didn't see it coming. And so I'm praying down there and I'm thinking, what are we going to do? What can change all that? Or what could happen? What's, what's your will here, Lord? What's your leading? What's your strategy? Okay. Well, I know I got ahead a moment ago, but that was uh, Tuesday morning that I was walking up and down in the lower parking lot. The meeting was set up for Wednesday afternoon at 2, but that morning in my devotions, the Lord spoke to my heart, and he says, I'm sending them out. And so later when I met with uh, Pastor Mark and also Sandy, they confirmed to me that that's what they were feeling. They were definitely resigning their position. They weren't sure where they were going to go. In fact, over in the morning service, uh, Pastor Mark quoted uh, from uh, Genesis 12, where we have the call of Abraham. And so, therefore, I want you to know that he feels and she feels that they're stepping out in faith. They're not sure where that will lead them, okay? So we need to be praying for them. Can you say amen? They've been coming here for 22 years. I've been their pastor for 22 years. <clears throat> and I've always encouraged Mark... I've always believed in him. In fact, he told me one time I was the only pastor that ever believed in him. I believed that he had a call on his life, and there's been a tremendous anointing upon him, and really upon Sandy, too. In fact, I've told Sandy, because she's spoken so many times, in my hearing anyway, how being pastors over there has helped her to grow. And I've said to her, more than once, there's a generational anointing upon you and your family, and it's very clear, it's very obvious, and so I thank God for that. Well, nothing's changed. They still feel that they have been uh, called out, and I, as I said, got that confirmation Wednesday morning in prayer that this is of God. Do I want that to happen? I'll be honest with you, I hate tearing. The tearing we go through. When I was a young pastor, I said, it seems like everybody I know is saying goodbye at some time or another, moving on to somewhere else, and that always bothers me. I thought that service would continue over there with them heading it up for a long, long time, but it hasn't happened. And the last Sunday there will be ministering would be July the 1st, they're going to come over here in the later service, and we're going to be praying over them and sending them out. And so be in prayer for that. And I just want you to know, when I said tearing, when you have worshipped with people, prayed with people, 
ministered together, been co-laborers in the same vision and outreach for the church, how hard that is to say goodbye. It's very hard for me. God bless you. I, I don't know what more to say. I just ask for prayer for them, prayer for us as we go through this transitional period of time. Can you say amen? So I'm going to ask you to stand. And we're going to invite the Holy Spirit in our service today, and we're going to invite him into this whole situation. Can you say amen? He's our senior partner, and we need him. Hallelujah. Together now, dear Spirit of God, come now. We welcome you into this happening with the Ebies, into this transition time. Come. Help us, Lord, to go through that. Help the people in the early service to go through that. Come now. Encourage us today. Strengthen us with might. Fill this place with your Shekinah glory. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Spirit of the living God. We welcome you, our helper today. We welcome you. Hallelujah. You're the senior partner of this church. Hallelujah. We're only junior partners. Oh, come, come, come upon us. In the name of Jesus, come upon your people today in a mighty and powerful way. Hallelujah. You are the one that puts band-aids on us, but you do more than that. You give us strength for our journey. Hallelujah. So we can walk in the strength of the Lord and we can go through whatever we're going through and we'll come out on the other side victorious. Can you say amen? Heal damaged emotions in Jesus' name. And again, Spirit of God, we welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Will you worship Jesus? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. A fellow ministry in the Lord, Rich here, Vreeland, is going to announce something to you right now. Good morning, Brookside. How's everybody doing? All right. Well, we've got a special guest today, and um, I know the folks here that know me know that uh, Patty and I, you guys can sit, sit, sit. All right, it's Sunday aerobics. Now get up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you guys know that Patty and I have a very unconventional ministry, and um, my friend that's here today, his name is Eddie Day. And he also has a very unconventional ministry. And we actually met doing unconventional ministry. Uh, there's been a, a few times where I had been invited to speak at a, at a church, and Eddie would come and do the praise and worship. And then there's been other times where I was just showing off my motorcycles, and Eddie was doing everything. And so we, we kind of team up here and there. And uh, we also, see, everybody knows about our, the Sturgis Free Oil Change Ministry. Well, Eddie has this awesome ministry out in Sturgis um, that he does with some other fellow musicians where they set up, uh, the Hells Angels have a clubhouse in, in downtown Sturgis, South Dakota. And he knows a fellow that bought the house right across the street. And they set up a stage on, across the street from the Hells Angels Clubhouse and play worship music 24-7 across the street. So that's the kind of guy that Eddie is, okay? And uh, how's that for an introduction, brother? Are we doing good? But I'm going to talk, we're going to take up an offering a, a little later. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about more of his ministry and his church that he pastors down in Princeton, West Virginia. So if you guys would come and welcome my friend, Eddie Day. Now this isn't going to be service as usual, folks. 
So just hold on, fasten your seatbelts. Eddie's going to sing and kind of give a message in between the songs. And, uh, and when he feels led by the Spirit, he's gonna, we're going to take a break. And then we'll take up the offering. And then he'll come back. Does that sound good, Eddie? Yes, sir. That's, that's kind of on the fly, just so you know. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Hey, everybody, let's give Jesus a big hand. If it's too loud, it's Rich's fault because he said the sound a while ago, so uh, I'm going to try to keep it down. It's too loud, you're too old. We usually watch for the nosebleed right in front, and if we get a nosebleed, we kind of back it off just a little bit. So I'm just kidding, it's not that bad. We were in uh, Philadelphia last night, and I drove here. I got here about 2 o'clock this morning, and uh, it was interesting. But my wife and my granddaughter and my son, we have a 9-year-old boy. He's my grandson that we adopted. And uh, I knew the Lord had a sense of humor when he sent us a child. We were in our 50s. And, uh, but I can do all things through Christ. Amen. And it's been the most joyous time of our lives, y'all. It's been a challenge, of course, but it's been amazing. And he's a wonderful young man. And uh, I'm going to have to go there from you. And I'm a crybaby, so just bear with me. Let's praise the Lord for just a minute, and uh, I'll get in. This may be a little different, but y'all can help me with it. Somebody say, can't you see what Jesus done for me?
what my Jesus has done for me. Say that now. Can't you see? Can't you see? What my Jesus has done for me. Change my life. Can't you see? Gonna take a break, Can't you see? Now it's nice and long. Somebody lift your hands and praise Him today, Lord. Give Jesus a big hand, y'all. Thank y'all so much. Put your hands together and help me a little bit, would you? Look at somebody and say, God's good. Tell them all the time. Oh, Lord, just fill this place with your power and your anointing in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, give me a G for Jesus. J for Jesus. Oh, here we go. I'm going to buy me a Bible, going to read them words of life. I'm going to get down on my knees, going to make some changes tonight. Somebody said it's a good idea. I used to ride on my own road, didn't care about a thing. Used to ride on my own road. I didn't care about a thing. Now I'm on that heavenly highway, and I'm riding with the king. Give me a J for my joy now. Give me a J for justify. Give me a J for my joy, y'all. Give me a day for justify. Give me a day for my Jesus, the man whose blood saved my life. Woo! Thank you, Lord. About you, lots of trouble where I've been. Yeah, I broke many storms, lots of trouble where I've been. I got an angel riding a shotgun, and I 
and my face is in the wind. <laughs> well, give me a day for my joy, y'all. Give me a day for justify. Give me a day for my joy now. Give me a day for justify. The man whose blood saved my life. Shake somebody's hand and say, God is so good. Daddy let the porch light on. Yeah, I'm not far from where I'm going. My daddy let the porch light on. Every day that I'm riding, I'm getting closer to my home. How about you? Yeah, give me a day for my joy now. Give me a day for justify. Give me a day for my joy, y'all. Give me a day for justify. Give me a day for my Jesus. The man whose blood saved my life. Somebody praise him today. Give me a day for my joy now. Give me a day for justify. Give me a day for my Jesus. The man whose blood saved my life. Give me a day for my Jesus. The man whose precious blood saved my life. Okay, I think we got it. Is that one working yet? It's not working. Give the Lord a big hand, y'all. Thank you, Lord. You all can have a seat if you'd like. Years ago, the Lord started dealing with me. Uh, my wife and I pastor a church in Princeton, West Virginia, on the streets of Princeton, West Virginia. And uh, I grew up there and uh, got in a lot of trouble there as a kid. And uh, the Lord sent me back to those streets to, to help people. You know, if you got something that really, really nags at you and tears at you and frustrates you, sometimes it could reflect on what God's going to do with you. He may tell you to do something about it. And uh, my daughter was a serious addict, r probably the worst that I've ever seen. And that's saying something. And uh, she had four children. Three of them were addicted when they were born. And uh, my last grandchild was born in Morgantown Hospital, addicted to Oxycontin. So I left at a revival in Indiana, and I drove to Morgantown to be with my daughter. And uh, I watched the devil just, just make a mess out of her life. But what I'd done, y'all, years ago, I brought a curse on my family by my lifestyle and the things that I was doing. And I wasn't serving God. And when I found the Lord and I made things right, I brought a blessing in my house. 
And uh, I'm watching God take that blessing and those benefits that come with that blessing. And I'm watching God put all their lives together. My last grandson that was born, they said he wouldn't be born alive. And if he was born, he would have serious defects. And they wanted my daughter to abort him, and she wouldn't. And they came and gave me that report, and I was standing in the church, and I said, I don't receive that. And they said, what do you mean you don't receive it? I said, you know, I bring a blessing on my house, and he promised that that blessing would follow my seed and my seed's seed for all these generations. And I said, I don't receive that. I believe that baby's going to be healthy, and he's going to be strong, and I just don't receive any negative stuff like that. I'm just speaking life over him in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Amen. And sure enough, when he was born, he was perfectly healthy. And we adopted him. He's nine years old now. He makes straight A's in school. He's just a wonderful, wonderful, healthy child. Somebody say amen. 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 Look at somebody beside of you and say, we got benefits. How many of y'all have a job? You may have 401K. You may have paid vacations after a year. You may have all these... And uh, you need to know what your benefits are for serving God. And there's some good ones. Somebody say amen. 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 When the Lord is in it, things are just a whole lot better. There's things that we can, we don't have to take the scraps from the devil, glory to God. We are free. We are blessed. We are more than conquerors. That means we're not, we don't just conquer things. We cut their heads off and walk around and brag about it. Glory to God. Amen. gets her attention. Glory to God. So the Lord's trying to teach us. I thought about David. There was times that said that David wept till he could weep no more when he came back and they had burned Ziglag, took his family, took everything they had. David and his men wept until they couldn't weep anymore. But he went on to say that David encouraged himself. And another translation says he repaired himself. He repaired himself. So there's times, y'all, that we got to get along with God and we got to encourage ourselves. We got to repair ourselves in Him. You just start worshiping the Lord, just start worshiping Him and hanging out with Him and come against those things. Somebody say that God gave me peace. The devil wants to take your peace and he wants to take all that junk off and, uh, and he wants to cause you all kinds of problems. He wants to bring in a dumping on you. So we're just believing God that we're going to stand in His peace. He was the Prince of Peace. Holy Spirit's a comforter. So we should have comfort and peace in all that we do, y'all. And when something takes that, we need to step back and come against that. Somebody say amen. 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 So don't let nothing take your peace. Very important to hang on to it. Somebody say amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand, would you? I got a song I got to do. The Bible says in one place that they honored him with their lips, but their heart was far away. I wrote this song as the Lord would be singing to us. Listen to the words. Oh, you tell me you love me, but you give alibis with the shout of commitment. Oh, you don't even try As the sun begins to set At the end of the day Don't just speak it with your lips When your heart is far away Oh, you smile when you say I'm your only one but your promises are empty When the left undone Confused priorities They start to decay Don't just speak it with your lips When your heart is far away Don't just tell me That Speak louder 
than any words you can say. Don't just speak it with your lips when your heart is far away. Oh, you say you've seen the light And straightened out some things And you say tomorrow Oh, there's gonna be a change I'll be waiting here Do you mean what you say? Don't just speak it with your lips when your heart is far away Don't just tell me That you know me I need you to love me I need you to show me Actions speak louder Than any words you can say When your heart is far away Oh, don't just speak it with your lips When your heart is far away Oh, so far away Don't just speak it with your lips When your heart is oh so far away Know this song just help me sing it, would you? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that like me I once was lost but now now I'm found I was blind oh but now now I see was grace was grace that's all my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious near that grace appear the hour I first be you lift your hands and praise Him today. Glory to God.
The children can be dismissed for Children's Church. Is that cool, Mandy? And I think we're going to take up an offering right now. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I'm thankful for Eddie. It's a little different music than some of you are accustomed to. But I, I know one thing. God's working here in a mighty and powerful way. And I thank him for that. The kids are going now, but listen up. We're taking up the first offering, which is the offering for the church. It consists of tithes and offering, or offerings. So I encourage you to be faithful in your giving. Uh, our offerings have been low for quite a while, but we're believing God that they will be higher than they've been for quite a while, and you can help us by being faithful. Can you say amen? How many believe that the tithe belongs to the Lord? 
All right. I won't ask the next question. Are you giving it to him? But anyway, God is good. So, ushers, will you come? Praise the Lord. Obviously, we need to be praying for the Ebis today. Pray that God will guide them and lead them in every way. As I said in the early service, uh, I know that down deep in Mark's heart is that he wants to travel around to the churches, and he really does have an evangelistic anointing. So pray that God will just lead them in a special way. Can you say amen? And then we need to pray for Vicki today. We need to pray for Mandy. Both of these uh, ladies need healing. We need to pray for Paul Melacrinos because he needs healing as well. Also, we need to lift up today David Schaefer. The request came in, and it reads this way. We need to pray because David needs healing of his mind and mental state and his memory. So, uh, so a number of you remember David Schaefer, so let's lift him up in prayer. Also, Rhoda's going to be going on a mission trip to Africa. We need to lift her up in prayer. Again, I encourage you, if you have a Pentecostal handshake, that you would uh, give her that kind of handshake. If you don't know what that is, I can explain it after the service, okay? <laughs> when you shake her hand, some, she feels something beside your hand. I'll say that much, okay? <laughs> All right, so praise God. Now, listen up. There's going to be another offering for our good friend here. He, I just began to know him, but I know he's a man of God, and so we'll follow that offering up. So I want you to lay up in store and you're thinking, okay, for that offering. Precious Heavenly Father, we count it a privilege to be in your presence here today, Lord, and we thank you for your presence among us all today, Lord. We thank you for who you are, Lord God, for your sovereignty. We thank you for the fact that you know everything before we even present it to you, Lord, and you're more than capable of handling anything, Lord, big or small. Lord, we ask for these requests that were already presented to you, Lord, for healing in Vicki and uh, Mandy's bodies, Lord, for any other physical healing that might be needed, Lord. We pray for Rhoda as she goes on this missions trip. We pray for uh, Caleb and Isaiah as they're somewhere right now ministering with another youth group, I think, Lord. And just be with them, bless them, bless their endeavors to reach others for you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing here. We thank you for our speaker, to, or our guest today, Lord, and just uh, continue to minister to him as he ministers to us, Lord. And just thank you for, for his ministry to you, Lord. Bless this offering now, and bless the gift and the giver, and use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Somebody say God's good. God's good. All the time. And all the time, Amen. Amen. So here's a little awkwardness. Um, I've never really done this before, so bear with me. Um, we're going to take up a, a second offering here for my buddy, Eddie. And um, I just want to give you some insight into some other things that Eddie does. Ed, Eddie pastors a church in Princeton, West Virginia. It's called The Bridge. And it, it's a, a church that's kind of like a cafe. They do their services at 2 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon because that's when drug addicts and people that have been out partying all night can get to church. So what Eddie does is Eddie meets a need, and he meets people where they are. And um, his church is right downtown in the middle of probably not the best area of town. And, uh, but he's there, and he's available. And um, Patty and I have, have been blessed many times to go on foreign mission trips and there, there was a, there's a missionary in the Dominican Republic that told me once quite proudly that he was training up pastors to come to be missionaries to the United States. And 
because that's what we need uh, to get God back in this country. And Eddie is one of these guys that is going to the places where people are that need to know Jesus. And he doesn't spend his Sundays in churches like this. He spends his Sundays on, in places where there isn't God, and he brings God to those places. So, you know, sometimes we can't go and do those things, but we might want to. So the way that we can do that is by giving our offerings to people like Eddie so that Eddie can go. We give our tithes to the church. We give our offerings where we can. And I just ask that you would bless Eddie today so that he can go and do what we can't do and fulfill the kingdom and, and bring more people to Christ because that's what we need in this country. We need more people. And, you know, let's face it, we, Eddie can't do it alone. He needs our help. And, um, you know, the testimony is that I know Eddie and I know that every dollar that you give to Eddie goes to the kingdom. And so with that, I just ask the ushers would come forward. If it's okay, I... I'll bless the offering. Father God, Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for your blessings, Lord. We thank you for your abundance. And as Pastor said, you know, our, our, our money isn't our money, it's your money, Father God. And I just pray that we would be led to give and to fulfill your kingdom, Father God, and that this money would bless Eddie and that your kingdom would be full with more believers. And Lord, uh, there's nothing better. I, I can't wait to that day that we... Uh, are up there with you, worshiping you and your son, Father. And we see the fruits of the offerings that we've get, given to people like Eddie and others around the world, Father God. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. All right. Thank you all so much. I'm going to do you a couple more songs, and i got something I want to tell you. And... Uh, May of you know that he's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Somebody say, if God be for me, who can be against me? Somebody say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. I'm a lender, not a borrower. Everything I put my hands to will be blessed. I'm a peculiar people. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a royal priesthood. Somebody say God's good. You keep doing that and you keep saying that like you mean it and it'll kind of make you feel real good, don't it? Praise God. A lot of times we magnify the problem instead of magnifying him. So that's what this song's about. like the thunder in a maker mountain sway Adam heard it walking in the cool of the day devils believe and tremble in hell he's well known cause every devil knows which side his bread is buttered on well he don't run and hide like those women gods of man and God don't need nobody to hold his hand Well, my God, don't need, don't need nobody to hold his hand. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God don't need nobody to hold his hand. Somebody say, man.
quick and mighty like a two-edged sword it'll divide soul and spirit slice deep into the core it'll take the craving from a junkie make a prostitute go straight it'll put love in that man who was once full of hate see diseases dying with her at the power in his name hey god don't need nobody to hold his hand Oh, jump up, clap your hands for me. Would you praise the Lord? Well, God don't need, he don't need nobody to hold his hand. Well, my God don't need, he don't need nobody to hold his hand. Well, he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning. Somebody say he's a big old God. Well, my God, don't need, don't need nobody to hold his hand. Well, he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Say it for me. God don't need nobody to hold his hand. Oh, if I don't watch the fire, you would sweat. Glory to God. Give Jesus a big hand, y'all. How many of you ever been through those times when you knew that the Lord was with you, but you felt like that maybe he was kind of busy? He didn't really understand what was going on in your life. Those times when you're crying and you're praying and you're trying to get God to answer you and it's just like silence. Amen. There was a time in the Bible when the disciples hit a storm, y'all. And they knew that Jesus was on their boat. But they knew he was asleep. And there's times in my life I knew that the Lord was with me. But I felt like he was sleeping. And I felt like he didn't understand me the horrible situation that I was in. And I wrote a song during that time. I was in a dark, dark place years ago, and I could not get God to answer me. I really needed guidance. I was in a situation, and I just could not get a yes or a no or a this way or that way. I couldn't get anything. How many of y'all ever had that happen? Somebody say we don't walk by feelings, we walk by... Amen. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. You don't see it. You don't always feel it, but you believe it anyway. And I wrote this song during that time, and I feel like I need to sing it for you today. And then I got a word to give you about it. And uh, listen to the words. The Lord spoke to me in the course of this song, straightened me out, but I was whining a little bit. Amen. Here I am again And I'm not sure at all Of that vision I know you gave I haven't heard from you In such a while I need a second wind For my faith 
I feel like a blind man Feel in the dark Lord, I need to see Where I am Holding on to Every promise you made As the waves keep Crashing in Keep my heart safe and sound Peace be still Don't let this storm pull me down There are those who They depend on me and they search my face for any fear Cause I proclaim to them All your words of truth I'm gonna fight this fight, Lord And hold back the tears But I hear you saying Of little faith Don't you know I'm never far And when you're overwhelmed By these crashing waves I know where you are Lay your head down And rest here on my knees Let me carry you Through this raging storm, son You'll find comfort at my feet Oh, God Somebody praise me. good y'all he never leaves us never forsakes us but there's times I just don't know what's doing I don't know what's up I don't know what's going on I've learned over the years to go through those times you know right before right before promotion comes proving most of the time somebody say amen, amen. right before you get to graduate or right before you get to advance in school you got to take semester exams and there's times that I go through those, you know, the Bible says that the Lord tempts no man. But every man's tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and trapped. But I know that the Lord will prove us the way he proved people all through the Bible. He, you don't get to advance until you get proven. 
He makes sure that you're not going to break under pressure. If you build a bridge and you want to get your kids on that bridge, you're going to get out there and jump up and down on it, make sure it's good. And God needs to know there's a lot of people handle things well till they get under pressure. Somebody say amen. amen. It's kind of like squeezing one of those jelly donuts. You don't know what's in it till you squeeze it. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Valentine's candy at our house. I don't know what's in it, so we all bite a little corner off of it to see if it's got caramel or that caterpillar looking stuff or whatever's in it, you know what I'm saying? And it looked like a bunch of rats had been in the candy. But uh, that's the way the kids and I do it. Mercy, why do y'all do that? My wife's, y'all, I know you don't know her. She's beautiful and she's sweet and, and uh, she makes me look better and sound better. But she's visiting her family today. But the Lord taught us through those times of testing. We got to hang on. We got to walk by faith and we got to trust God. And that uh, sounds real preachy for me to stand up here and say that, but there's times that I didn't pass that test with an A. Amen. There's times I made a C minus. Amen. There's times when I didn't feel like that I handled things real good. There's times that I panicked. There's times that I made bad decisions. How many of y'all ever made bad decisions? One bad decision can ruin your life for years. Somebody say amen. 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 You marry a hatchet murderer and you thought he's a nice guy, you're going to have problems. Somebody say amen. Amen. Well, that goes both ways, ladies. All the ladies laugh just now. But, uh, amen. Somebody say we really need to be sure. We need to pray about things. We need to make sure. Matthew 6.33 says, if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all this other stuff will be added to us. So you give God number one priority in your life. And uh, for me, years ago, Murray and I were, were doing ministry, and I got to go here for a minute. And we were traveling all over the country, and we were just burning it up, man. We were seeing souls saved, and there was an anointing of evangelism on our ministry before I started pastoring. And we still got that, but it's the pastoring is a whole different thing. It's a different hat. I know y'all understand that. And uh, I didn't want to do it. It was a four-letter word. I wanted nothing to do with pastoring. And I said, God, I don't want to do that. I've heard too many horror stories from my pastor friends. I do not want to pastor. And the Lord made me look up every word in the Bible that had to do with pastor, shepherd, keeper. They're all the same word. And I had to study that for weeks. <laughs> That's God's way of saying, I know you don't want to do it, but you're going to do it. I said, all right, okay. So I submitted, and I repented. And uh, after I started doing it, I understood that they needed me. A lot of those people needed somebody to help them. It's a big responsibility. I don't like that. But uh, I can do all things through Christ. God will take a heavy machine operator and have him teach a knitting class just to show you that it's not about you. It's not what you can do. If he anoints you, you can do anything. Somebody say amen. amen. It's the anointing that breaks yokes. It's the anointing that gives you the ability to do things that you ordinarily wouldn't be able to do. And the Lord spoke to me. I went to my pastor and I was trying to make him, I said, God won't listen to me. Would you talk to him and explain to him that I'm not, I'm not gonna be a good pastor, that it's not my cup of tea. I grew up on these streets. And uh, I had a short fuse. I got real angry real fast. And, and I told the Lord, I can't handle these crazy people when they come in drunk and they come in. I said, you know me, Lord. I'm going to go to jail. I'll go, you know. And he said, it'll be on the job training. <laughs> and uh, we hadn't been open on the street for maybe two or three services. And we were in a real bad part of town. And one night, this guy, the meanest guy in town came. And his name was Ricky Ganode. And everybody in town knew him. The cops knew him. He threatened a judge in town and got like 10 years for threatening to kill a judge. This guy was just crazy and he'd fought and he'd drunk and he was just mean. And Ricky came to the front of our church on the street one night and started pushing people. And I went outside and I said, Ricky, I need you to go right now. Well, he shoves me like this. And it's just my instinct, you know. I'm like, man, I got ready because I grew up there. And God said, no. Nah. I said, well, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> and he's bound. I said, Ricky, don't put your hands on me. I said, if you do, I'm going to call the law. And he went to grab me again and push me. And I grabbed him, and I held him like this. I just had his head under my arm. And I got his windpipe like this. And I just held him. And he's kicking. 
And he's, he's squealing and he's jerking, and I'm just holding him until I felt his legs buckle. And I let go of him. I didn't hit him. And I'm standing there, just instinct, y'all. It all happened so fast. This was many years ago. <clears throat> and he looked at me, and I said, now, I want you to leave right now. And he said, no, you started something. Let me get this coat off. We're going to finish this. I said, I have to go start the service. So I walked in and I sang like I did just now for about a half hour. When I got done, he opened the door and he cussed everybody in the church, screamed. And uh, he said, come on out here, man, you're going to settle this. And everybody's looking at me. I said, pray for me. So I walked outside and I said, Ricky, I don't want to fight you. I said, you're drunk. I'm going to tell you one more time. No, we're going to settle this. I said, okay, man. I said, come on. He said, really? I said, hurry up. I got to go preach. He goes, I don't want no trouble with you, man. And he shook my hand. I said, leave. So he left. And that's the good part is the next day. I'm a cry baby. I went back to the church. And I was unlocking the door, but I walked around all night in my driveway crying and telling God, I told you I couldn't do this. I told you I wasn't called to do this. I don't have the temperament to deal with dummies. I just can't do it. <laughs> so I, I'm arguing with God the way Moses did when he said, I, I don't talk good. You can't send me to Pharaoh because I can't talk good. So I'm arguing with God, telling him I can't do that. And, and when as I went to open the door, here come Ricky up the sidewalk. So I turned around and got ready. I didn't know what he was going to do. And I'm looking at him, and he's standing there like this in front of me. I said, you want something? He said, uh, I owe you an apology. I said, you sure do. I said, let's have it. And that tears, man, big old tears come rolling down his face. Dripping off his chin. Ricky Gano don't cry, y'all. He didn't know how to cry. He come from a rough family, they're crazy. And he's standing there crying in front of everybody. People are looking. And uh, he said, Eddie, man, I need help. And I grabbed him and I held him and we, we cried together. And I took him into church. And after that day, I was Mr. Day. I wasn't Eddie anymore. I was Mr. Day and everybody in town heard, don't go down there to that church start in trouble because that preacher ain't gonna put up with it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He choked Ricky out, man. And uh, I didn't even realize I did it. But Ricky came back and apologized. And uh, many a night he would come in and we would feed him nabs and potato chips and try to sober him up. And he was very polite. He didn't bother nobody. Sometimes the cops would stand outside on the street waiting on him to come out to arrest him because he'd run in there to get away from him. And they said, Eddie, we don't want to interrupt your service. And I said, man, if you've got to get him, come and get him, you know. It's probably three weeks, month or two, whatever it was later, Ricky died. And uh, he fell off the bridge at the other end of town and landed in the river. And, and uh, the word on the street is they pushed, they threw him off the bridge because the people hated him. I was probably the only person that went home and cried over Ricky Gnode. It broke my heart because I don't feel like a lot of times that people get a fair shake. I just, his family, none of them knew God, y'all. The parents didn't know God. The grandparents were alcoholics, and the great-grandparents were probably moonshiners, and they, it was like it just trickled down. There was a curse on that family. It was horrible. And I said, Lord, I don't like doing that. I don't like, I don't like being in a position like that. But after that one time with the meanest guy in town, I've never had any trouble that I, you know, major stuff, because everybody heard about it. So God knows what he's doing. And those people know that we love them, and we know we want to help them. And you all have ministries and you have gifts and you have talents. There's people that will listen to you won't give me a second glance, y'all. There's people that you can reach and people you have influence with and people. And your pastors are anointed to know your strengths and weaknesses. They know where you would fit. Probably better than you do sometimes. It's a pastoral anointing. And uh, I just want to encourage you not to give up. And that thing that bothers you, that thing that just keeps you awake at night, you go, ooh, that bothers me. I never had a church in my area because of the Bible Belt and because it was so legalistic and there was so much tradition. There's a lot of mountain 
uh, superstition that's mixed in with the word down there. People got all, they got a big soup of this stuff, and it's not the word of God. It's it's just all kinds of stuff thrown in the pot. So we opened up a place, and and there's freedom. The Spirit of the Lord is liberty, and there's people being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And Amen. People are coming in off the street and getting free, and the churches got angry. You know, a lot of people didn't like it. I'm telling you all that to let's let you know that God has always been with me through this stuff, and he'll be with you. Don't get discouraged, frustrated. How many of you have lost loved ones? Our state leads to state in overdoses. Um, I seen the fact the other day that popped out. We have the highest rating of overdose deaths. I have buried so many people, y'all. Couldn't help them all. Helped many of them. Then I had to do a lot of funerals. And it just took, it just, it's really frustrating, but it drives me to keep going and, and keep helping people. One thing that attracted me to God in the, in the church was peace. I had no peace. And the people that I had met that were Christian folks, I didn't want nothing to do with that. I really had God stereotyped, and I thought I knew what God was about because of those people, those snooty religious people that hurt people. And uh, they tell you to come in, but if you didn't look right, they'd tell you to leave, you know. And they'd tell you to come in as long as, yeah, you know, as long as you could help them. So that turned me off. So the Lord had us open a place, and I just need to tell you that God's going to really use some of you in ministry, and he's going to help you with your families. Everybody's different, y'all. You just got to pray and find out what God, the best way to reach people. The Holy Spirit wants to reach them more than you do. So you say, I've asked that boy time and time again. He just won't come to church. I want to tell you this, and I'm going to change some things here. But I had a boy come in our music store. Mary and I used to own a little music store, and he came in, and he looked like Dracula. You got a picture of this guy. He was real pale, and he had jet black hair and sunglasses and a black coat and black boots and black clothes. And he was just, he looked like Dracula, man. His name was Jeff. And he'd come in with some of the darkest songs. He would, he would read his lyrics to me, and they were just dark and ugly and and I said, uh, man, Jeff, I said, where you get this stuff from? And he said, it's just what I feel, man. And I said, wow, it's, you know, it's a lot of depressing stuff there, you know. A lot of, he said, I've had a depressed life. And I said, why don't you come to church with me? So I was going to a church like here. It's a whole lot like here because people were just smiling and they would have accepted him and they would have loved him. He said, me in church like this? I said, just like you are. I said, go to church with me, man. I said, I want you to check it out. Well, he never would. And one day he needed a guitar case. I said, I'll give you a guitar case if you go to church with me. Yeah. You ain't going to let up, are you? And I said, no. He said, all right, I'll be there Sunday. I said, here's your case. I trust you. Well, Sunday morning, I had Dracula sitting in the front row. <laughs> and everybody's kind of... You know, they're speaking to him and stuff, but he's really... And when I walked in, I hugged him, and everybody said, oh, it's one of Eddie's, you know. Yeah, he's all right. He's good. <laughs> and after the service, he was outside, and I said, what'd you think, man? He said, I was disappointed. I said, why? He said, I couldn't find anything wrong. <laughs> so God sowed a seed in Jeff's heart that way, and I want to encourage you to keep nagging people. Just nag them to get them in here to hear the Word of God, and let the Holy Spirit mess with them because God can change anybody, y'all. God can fix anybody. I go to the prisons and the correctional centers, and the last time we went to Huttonsville Correctional Center, the whole auditorium from one end to the other of the altar, there was nowhere else to kneel. Those men were just crying, and God was just hugging on them. It was beautiful. Amen? So don't give up. I just want to tell you, look at somebody and say, don't give up. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. And look at him and say, nag, nag, nag. That's how my wife got me in church. She nagged and she pushed me. Thank God. I went to shut her up. I said, I'm going to go to church just to shut you up. I don't want to hear no more of this Jesus stuff. And that night I got saved. Amen. The Spirit of God body slammed me. I'm telling you, I had an experience with God and it changed my life. Never think people are too mean or too honorary to be saved. Give Jesus a hand, would you?
So you know the definition of worry? The definition of worry means to torment oneself with disturbing thoughts. You can go read that. Worry means to torment oneself with disturbing thoughts. How many of y'all been worrying? Why? Because we don't understand what's going to happen tomorrow. We got things that are concerning us, and that concern goes overboard, and you start worrying, and you get into fear. Right now in your life, folks, you're either walking in faith or you're walking in fear. There is nothing else. Somebody say amen. amen. Point at somebody and say, you're walking in faith or you're walking in fear. Amen. Fear has torment. God did not give you a spirit of fear. So if God didn't give it to you, where did it come from? God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Somebody say amen. Yeah. A sound mind. You start forgetting things, the first suggestion you'll get is you got Alzheimer's, man. <laughs> yeah, you got, the, you got the first effects of it. If you start forgetting things, you do something stupid, I mean, that stuff starts talking to you. And, and like my, I heard your pastor praying this morning, we got to tear down those imaginations. We got to take those thoughts captive. Yeah. Somebody say amen. You can't let your thoughts run wild. Here's the battleground. This is where you deal with all that. Somebody say amen. amen. A couple years ago, I walked off a step at our house, just bebopping along. And the step, I run out of screws when I built those steps. They were very solid, but I put a nail in it. And honest to God, that one place, I stepped on it and the step broke. I went down and busted my heel and it threw me out in the driveway. I broke it. I was laying there and I was quivering all over. I got sick and, and I couldn't walk and I knew I'd broke my foot. And I looked back and I seen that little rusty nail sticking out and I remembered. I remembered. I took that real personal by the way. I went back and burned those steps. <laughs> I had to. Hey Amen. It's just the way I am. I, I pulled the steps off the house. I took them out and I hobbled out and I burnt those steps in the woods and built a new set of steps. <laughs> Amen. I took it real personal like you ain't gonna hurt me. Amen. So I was laid up and I didn't go to the doctor. I just put duct tape on it because I'm a hillbilly and that's what we do. And uh, I got me an office chair and I put my knee in an office chair and I pushed myself around. And uh, I set my bathroom up where I could push myself in there and I had a little chair. I'd shower, you know, and do my business. And, and uh, I, never, I didn't go to the doctor. I thought I got away with something in about three or four weeks, I started getting dizzy. I got real, real dizzy and my head started uh, blacking out. And I got up one morning and I couldn't breathe and they had to call an ambulance. And long story short, when I got to the hospital, I had a blood clot all the way across my lungs. And they said it was the biggest blood clot they ever seen. And they said, don't move, you know, don't move. A little blood clot as big as your fingernail can kill you. So I got this snake in my chest and I'm thinking, man. And they said, how do you think that happened? I said, I broke my foot. And they said, how do you know it's broke? I said, it's broke. And they said, we're going to x-ray it. And they x-rayed my foot. And they said, your foot's broke. I said, I told you. <laughs> they said, don't it hurt? I said, yeah, it hurts. Why didn't you get it fixed? I said, I don't like y'all sawing on me all the time. And I said, I just got this thing with doctors. You know, I just try to, and honestly, we didn't have insurance. This is years and years ago. So I really thought I could just put a Band-Aid on it and fix it and everything would be all right. So I'm laying in the hospital with this blood clot and they got all these tubes in me and I'm laying there and this little doctor come in and she's a friend of mine's daughter. And she said, Eddie, I gotta tell you something very serious. And she said, uh, we found a mass on your left lung. And she showed me the x-ray. It looked like an octopus spread out on my lung. And I've been having cramps in my chest. I've been feeling something. And she said, it looks like cancer. And she said, I've seen it many times. And my wife was sitting there and her sister and they started crying and people, and I said, stop y'all, just stop. Don't do that. I said, I hear you, honey. I said, I hear, I believe you found something, but I said, I'm just believing God for a miracle. I'm a man of faith. And she said, you're in denial. It's normal to be afraid, Eddie. I said, it's more than that, baby. I said, I just, honestly trust God and she said well will you let us do a biopsy I said sure they was going to go through my nose and get a piece of this and check it and then they decided to collapse my lung and they were going to go in 
And I said, no, I'm not going to let you do that. So they sent these cancer doctors to talk to me, and I witnessed to them. And this one, uh, this one cancer doctor, she's very well known. She's a, she's a brilliant doctor. She said, uh, so you a man of faith? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, Mr. Day, you die for your faith? I said, yes, ma'am. Like that. She went, ha, oh, rolled her eyes. And she said, you not let us do biopsy? I said, no, ma'am. I said, you ever seen a miracle? She said, I said, have you ever seen a miracle? I said, I believe that. I said, I believe that God's going to fix me. She said, good luck. Good luck to you. And she walked off. And all these doctors were angry with me. So I signed myself out of the hospital, and I went home. And I called people that I knew were mature in prayer that could pray with me and agree with me. Because if any two agree on any one thing, somebody say amen. Yeah. Amen. I said, I don't need you to feel sorry for me. I don't want you to be crying. I need you to pray for me and agree with me for a miracle. I do not receive this. I'm not going to lay down with this. I am believing God. I believe that they found something, but I believe God's going to fix it. I believe God's going to take care of it. Two months later, I had people praying. I didn't tell a lot of people at our church because a lot of people mean well, but they would have put me in the ground, y'all. Oh, Brother Eddie, I'm so sorry. You know, I said, don't, don't do that. I don't want to hear all that. Agree with me in faith. Stand with me in faith. So I went home, and I'm praying. Two months later, I went back, and this other doctor x-rayed, and they said, well, the blood clot's gone. I said, you're good to go. I said, thank you. I said, you didn't find anything else? And they said, like what? And I said, well, they said, there's, I seen the x-rays. There's this mass on my left lung. And she walked out and come back in, and this is exactly what she said. Mr. Day, I don't know what God you pray to, but there's nothing there. Yay. Somebody get this. Yeah. So I went back to that sweet little doctor, and I said, baby, would you look at my, I was on a cane, you know. I said, would you look at my x-rays? And she looked at him, and she looked at him again, and she stood up and started crying, and she hugged me. And she said, you got your miracle. She said, I, that's just amazing. And this other doctor said, that wasn't cancer to begin with. I said, that's not what you said. You told me that you had seen this over and over again. You knew what it was. Yeah, but I, yeah, yeah. So we know what it was, don't we? Amen. Believe God for those benefits and stand on the word of God. Don't fall into fear. Fear will rob you of everything. Fear will take your courage. Yes. Amen. When the Lord spoke to Joshua and told him to go and take in all these nations, go and conquer them. Everywhere your foot goes, it'll be yours. He said, but be strong and be of great courage. Don't be dismayed. Don't fear. Be of great courage. He told him over and over and over again. So don't fear. Don't fall into fear. Walk in faith and trust God. Somebody say amen. amen. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand and tell him how much you love him. I just want to encourage you to fight. Amen. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The devil is hard of hearing this, this evil, this stuff that we fight every day. You really need to stand, and you need to take a stand. And when you've done all you can do to stand, stand. Somebody say amen. amen. And stand in faith and believe God. Speak the word of God. Every time Jesus, in Luke 4, when the devil was tempting him, he said, it is written. It is written. Why? Because the word of God takes precedence over everything. Somebody say amen. The Word of God can change situations. It's supernatural, y'all. It can change temporary situations. I just want to encourage you to just bathe in God's presence and, get, and bathe in His power and uh, praise Him and honor Him and thank Him. Worship Him as your healer. He's not just our Savior. He's our healer. He's our lawyer. Amen. He can do anything. So look at somebody and say, God can do anything. My wife has been healed several times, and in, in our house, we call her the wart woman. Somebody say the wart woman. My wife was praying for people, and warts would fall off. I mean, literally fall off. And there was a little girl had one in her nose, and kids were making fun of her. And they called Mary, and Mary went over and cursed that wart in the name of Jesus. And next day, y'all, it fell off. It just rolled out. They had a little dried piece of skin and a napkin. A friend of mine had a seed wart on the bottom of his foot, 
and was getting ready to have surgery. I said, stop right there. I said, Mary, where I said, come here, honey. I said, lay hand on Randy's foot. I said, he's got a seed wart. And he said, you want me to take my shoe off? And I said, no, nah, it'll go through the shoe. <laughs> Amen. That's my faith. So Randy put his foot up. My wife cursed that wart. Two days, y'all, that thing come off in his sock. It came off. It just came off, and there's not a scar. There's nothing. There's just a little piece of... So uh, I call her the wart woman from West Virginia. Amen. Okay. But she had an anointing to pray for stuff like that and still does. Ain't it something how the body is set up that way? We all have different callings. We all got different things that God's called us to do. It all works together. Somebody say amen. I really want to uh, give you an opportunity to bring your mess to God and to get in faith. Just get in faith. If something's tormenting you, something's keeping you up, you're tormenting yourself with disturbing thoughts. You're worried to the point that you're getting into dark depression. You pull the shades, you turn the lights out, you don't want to talk to nobody. I've been there. How many of you know that Elijah was there one time? This great man of God got to a place that he got to himself and he slept. That's what people do when they're depressed. And he, did, he just wanted to die. He actually prayed for God to take his life. Have you ever felt like that? I have. But later on, he come out of that. He shook it off. So don't feel bad, y'all. Just don't live there. It's a miserable, miserable place to live. You miss your smile. You miss that warm feeling of God's presence. You don't laugh anymore. You don't like to go out anymore. You don't like to enjoy. Don't get there, honey. That's no place to live. That's not, that's not abundant life. Somebody say amen. amen. If you're here and you need prayer, would you walk forward and let us pray for you? And we're just going to stand with you. Sometimes you need somebody to watch your back. You need somebody to agree with you, just like I did. And we'll agree together and we'll believe God for a miracle. If you can't fix it, you've got to stop worrying about it. Somebody say amen. amen. Take no thought for tomorrow. Take no thought. That sounds irresponsible, but you can't fix it. You have to give it to God. He can fix it. Glory to God. Would you come? If you need prayer, we're going to agree with you for a miracle. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, would you come? Would you come? This is my testimony. Well, I was just a singer, a natural born guitar ringer. Kind of a clinger, them sad old songs. They call me Sidewinder. Was a constant reminder. And I wished I'd have been kinder to those who've already gone. But I started drinking I took things that missed up my thinking And I, I was sure sinking When you came along I was alone in the hot lights not much left in my life you came in one night When you gave me this song Hey Jesus, I love you Hey Jesus, I need you I can see there's not much good left in this man. I wasted so much of my life 
running through the dark nights. You shine your love light down on this blue news man. So sick from speed and taking things they said I was needing. My friends kept leaving, they didn't understand. I was headed down the wrong road. But you came and took all that old load Down off this blue who's man Bring your bad report and come on up here Hey Jesus, I love you Come on Hey Jesus, I need you And I can see you've always had my life there in your hands, yes you do. I'm over 50 years old now. Baptize him in your spirit. Now I'd like to be so cold now. Baptize him in the name of Jesus. If you hadn't brought me out, save this blue news man. Nights would be so cold now If you hadn't brought me out And saved this blue news man Thank you, Lord Somebody here right now your ears are being touched. You, you haven't been able to hear good. I don't know if it's both ears or one ear, but something popped. Glory to God. Just praise him. Say, thank you, Lord, for fixing my ear. Just say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Lift your hands and praise your healer today. He's a wonderful God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Popping in the ears. Thank you, Jesus. It's like water in the ear. It's like it, it sounds funny, like it's stopped up sometimes. I see the Lord fixing it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power. Thank you, Lord. God can fix your liver. I've seen so many people healed of hepatitis. Y'all, I lost count. Glory to God. God's a healer. Jesus, I praise you for your anointing. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Ask Him. Ask Him. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Jesus. Hey, Jesus, I love you. Hey, Jesus, I need you. And I can see there's not much good left in this man. I wasted so much in my life running through the dark nights. You shine your love light down on this blue man. Oh, Jesus, I praise you for your healing power. Someone, someone's been passing blood in your urine, and you're worried. Oh, God, I just speak peace over your mind and emotions. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing into your body. Lord, I praise you for your healing power. 
Matthew 8, 17 says he took our sickness and disease upon himself. Jesus, I praise you. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Mm. By his stripes, you were healed. You were healed. You were healed. Malachi and I tell you, I say. Thank you, Father God. I praise you for your anointing. Hey, um, thanks everybody for coming, and uh, God bless you all. Uh, we are going to have a, a baptism service here in a couple minutes. If you want to stay, please stay. Uh, and th here, this is just an invitation. If you've never been water baptized and, and you've thought about it, and you uh, like to do things on the spur of the moment and you're spontaneous, come on up, and uh, it would be awesome. So, uh, God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thanks, Eddie.